Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw a bear in charcoal. So let's start. So how do you draw a bear? I suppose it's sort of like drawing a wolf on steroids. I'm joking of course, but obviously this is a much larger animal with a large belly and hips and everything. Let me go over my materials uh, real quick. I'm going to be doing the sketch with a graphite pencil first and later I'll switch to charcoal. Um, the charcoal pencils I'm going to use are Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils. Two grades, a medium and a soft. And I'm also going to use some erasers, a Kohinoor pencil eraser or an eraser and a pencil. A Faber-Castell kneaded eraser, some brushes and some tutilians. The paper I'm working on is a Fabriano sketching paper, about 5 times 8 inches in size. So I'm doing the sketch of the animal trying to get the shape or the initial outline to look right. One of the things I like about drawing animals is that you don't really have to worry too much about precision and proportions because it's not like when you're drawing humans. Uh, likeness is not as much of an issue as long as you can get it to look close to the animal you're trying to draw. So if my sketch is, a, is off by a few millimeters here and there, it's not a big problem. So this is my bear. And now I'm going to switch to a charcoal pencil. And first I'm going to use a medium charcoal pencil. And I'm going to start by going around the outline here at the top. And you can see that I'm not drawing the, uh, a continuous line. I'm drawing interrupted small marks to imitate the appearance of the fur, short fur at the top of the body. And here at the bottom, where we're going to have a little bit more shadow, I decided to add some marks with a pointed stick to create some indentations because when you go over those uh, lines, those invisible lines, uh, some white lines will start to appear. So that's how I plan to draw some grass under the bear because I thought it, it would be a little bit difficult for me to erase uh, with a pencil eraser and I wasn't really sure how much some of those fi finer blades of grass would show up against these pitch dark areas. So maybe I thought it would be a good, good idea to create some indentations with the stick. And now I'm just shading the hind leg here and then the belly. Uh, by the way I switched to a soft charcoal pencil here. This one is a little bit darker and softer, easier to blend, but more importantly it's darker. And I'm defining the shadow side or the shadow areas of the bear's body. As you can see, these are mostly on the lower side of the body because light is coming from above. Uh, this is a very important step in the drawing process because it creates or defines the contrast between the lighter areas and darker areas. So I'm establishing those larger relationships between the shadow areas and lighter areas. This way we define the overall shape and volume of the animal. Uh, we create an illusion of volume and depth. There's also a little bit of shadow here on the paw here because it's facing down away from the light source. So uh, that way you establish those large relationships first and then you can start working on the details. I'm just adding a few more uh, invisible lines or indentations with a pointed stick and when I go over it with my pencil, you will see white lines or blades of grass start to appear. Later I will refine it, of course, with my erasers and pencils, but for now I'm just sort of going to blend over it and leave it like that and focus on the animal. Uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, it's important to establish the larger relationships first if you can so that later it would be easier for you to work on the texture of the fur. Right now I'm blending the those darker shadow areas 
And I would really like to do this with my finger because your finger is a great and efficient blending tool, but uh, I can't really do that here because I need more precision, so I'm using a tutilin. And the thing is that different blending tools have different effects, so if you want to create pitch dark areas, you might want to use your finger because it uh, pushes the charcoal into the grain of the paper and retains those darker values. If you use brushes, sometimes you will make those areas a little bit lighter. Totilians are okay because they still allow you to push the charcoal in and retain those dark values. Not quite as good as the finger in that respect, but they are much better because uh, they have a fine tip and you can create uh, lines and shapes with more precision. By the way, as I'm working on the grass here and as I'm working around the head here with my tutilian, you can see that you can also use a tutilian as a drawing tool. By the way, these are homemade tutilians. I just rolled them myself. You can also use blending stumps or whatever. So uh, you can use them as drawing tools when they pick up a little bit of charcoal because they are just like pencils except they create lighter marks which are a little bit less defined and they have less texture. So here I went over the edge of the head on the right because I want to create some contrast between the light side of the head and the background. So here I will deliberately make the background a little bit darker so that the head would stand out. And now I'm finishing the rest of the background with a brush, but I worked around the edge with a tutilian. That part of the head will be lighter because it's catching light from the light source. My light source is coming from above, but it's also coming a little bit from behind and a little bit more from the right, I think. So uh, that part of the head, uh, the right side of the forehead and the uh, snout area will be lighter. <coughs> now I'm working on the left side of the body and I'll mostly be working from left to right now and I uh, use a sharp charcoal pencil to start working on the fur. Here I'm just sort of uh, pushing the charcoal around around the uh, bear's body to create a little bit of uh, value in the background because in some parts of the background I will want to establish some contrast between the background and the bear's body and when you have that contrast in value, even though even when it's subtle, that gives you a little bit more uh, feeling of depth in the scene. So I'm back to using a sharp medium charcoal pencil here to add these uh, clumps of fur uh, in the belly area. And I'm trying to vary the shape and the direction a little bit so that I could make them look a bit more realistic. And here I'm going to start working on the texture of the fur. And when you're drawing fur, there are a couple of things to remember. First, obviously, it's a good idea to establish the larger relationships first, which is what I just did. I uh, drew the shadow areas and uh, made a distinction between the light side of the body and the dark side of the body. However, once you start actually working on the details, you have to pay attention to a couple of things. First, the direction of the fur. Second, the length of the fur. Uh, the length of your strokes and the direction of your strokes has to match the length and the direction of the fur so that you could make the fur look realistic. Because once you start blend, blending over that, and sometimes you don't even want to blend, but I will be blending with a brush as you can see, but even when you blend with a brush, some of those marks will be softened, some of them will disappear but uh, the texture will still remain. Most of those marks will still be visible and you can still see the length and the direction of the fur even though you went over it with a brush. That's one of the things I like about brushes and that's one of the, the reasons why I like using brushes for drawing fur is because uh, even though they help you blend they don't destroy the texture of the fur completely. So it would be a shame to let all of that uh, hard work you've put in, drawing it, almost every single hair, go to waste. Uh, if you use the tutilian, for example, which would just um, blend a lot more thoroughly and destroy those lines. So you want to retain that texture and a brush is perfect for that. Later you can go over that uh, with a pencil again, refine some of those darker shadow areas between the clumps and uh, maybe uh, modify some of the shapes a little bit 
adding some suggestions of anatomy and things like that. After that, as a final touch, as a final phase, you, you draw the highlights or the lighter uh, hairs on that fur. That creates a greater range of value and makes the fur look more three-dimensional. And of course, I do this with an eraser. I'm using a Kohinoor pencil eraser for this. It's a rubber eraser and a wood casing. It can be sharpened like a pencil and used like a pencil. That's why it's so convenient. You could also use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser or a kneaded eraser, except that with a kneaded eraser you would have to keep reshaping it and remolding it so that it would keep, uh, keep that uh, uh, small shape, fine shape. Anyway, as you can see, my marks are lighter and more dense at the top and uh, fewer and far, further in between at, in the shadow area at the bottom. And uh, I've done the thigh and the backside area on the left and now I'm gradually moving on to the belly area. Now, as I'm working just above the shadow area here, there's another thing that I forgot to tell you about drawing those larger shadow areas. Because uh, once again, it's uh, very important to establish those larger contrasts, but another thing that's very helpful is when you have these larger shadows, uh, you want to try to connect shadow areas, almost to try to connect them into a single shape, because uh, what that does, it gives you a more effective looking shape in the sense that it emphasizes the contrast between the lighter parts of the animal's body and the darker parts of the animal's body and makes it a lot easier for the viewer to understand the shape of the animal. So uh, when you have large shadow areas like this one you want to try to sort of connect them as much as possible almost into a single black or dark shape and you allow the lighter shape to stand out. So these are just some of the things you can use to emphasize the 3D appearance of the of your subject and also to capture the focus of the viewer and allow them to understand shapes more easily. So I did the texture of the fur on the belly area. I'm going to get back to that a bit later but now I'm adding a little bit of value around the back side here because I'm going to want to draw some highlights there as well. So first I established a little bit of darker value on the on the back side uh, on the background and now I'm drawing some of these lighter hairs with a pencil eraser and you can see how uh, the back side of, of the bear is starting to stand out against the background so it's uh, important if you can to try to establish this contrast between the background and the main subject so that the main sub subject would stand out. I'm not going to do all of the background because this is going to be a sort of a vignette but uh, I did a little bit of background so that I could create a bit more depth in my scene and so that the main subject would stand out and so that the overall scene would be a little bit more interesting. So I did a lot of blending here on this uh, middle area, midsection area and uh, you can see that some parts of the belly uh, are a little bit darker, almost like these vertical shapes going over the side of the belly. These are of course not ribs, uh, these are just folds in the fur because uh, here the fur is a bit longer and uh, these folds in the fur, they kind of follow the folds in the skin and the anatomy of the animal's body. And that's why you want to show a little bit of shadow in between them. You'll have those folds in between uh, the hip area and the belly area, for example, that's why I made that area a bit darker and now I'm drawing some lighter marks to make the belly area stand out against the hip area or that waist area rather, a little bit. And you also have that uh, darker transition between the belly area and the chest and the shoulder area as well as some other portions of the animal's body. Here at the top again I'm concentrating a little bit more of those lighter marks uh, with a pencil eraser and making them uh, a little bit uh, uh, less conspicuous here at the bottom in the shadow area. Always I am trying to remember to make sure that the length of the strokes and the direction of the strokes matches the length and the direction of the hair in that particular part of the animal's body. 
If your eraser picks up a little bit of charcoal, you don't have to keep uh, you don't have to keep sharpening it because sometimes you can use that dirty eraser to go over some of the shadow areas. You want to pull some highlights in those shadow areas as well. But in the shadow areas, these uh, lighter clumps of fur are obviously a bit darker, so the contrast is more subdued. So you can actually use that to your advantage. So I'm doing still a little bit of refining on the belly area, just making sure that I uh, get the texture of the fur right, but also the overall shape of the belly so that it looks around and so that it, look, it has some volume, because it has a lot of volume. Here at the bottom, I'm adding some details to the grass because there needs to be a little bit of shadow under the animal. The animal is casting a shadow down onto the grass, so I drew some darker blades of grass there. And then pulled some lighter marks in the background, and now I'm pulling some slightly uh, thinner, more defined, lighter marks in the foreground here. Because I want some of these blades of grass to be uh, obscuring a bit of the animal's uh, feet and uh, legs. And I want to make it look layered, so that so that it looks like uh, some of these blades of grass are in front of the others. So you want to achieve a feeling of depth. Uh, this is of course not the focus of the video, because this video is about the bear. But, you know, I just wanted to have at least a little bit of the background, even though this is a vignette. So uh, the background is simplified. And what I like about vignettes, and I talked about this a lot many times, is that you can you can have a little bit more freedom with the composition and you can choose which parts of the background to include and how much of it you want to include. <coughs> so now I'm working my way to the top part uh, of the back and the, and the right side of the drawing, moving closer to the shoulder area and finally uh, the head and the neck area. I'm just doing the same thing that I've done so far. I'm drawing the texture of the fur, drawing a lot of these small hairs. The thing is that you don't have to draw every single hair and that's probably impossible and would be very very time consuming. I mean maybe there are people who do that when they draw photorealistic uh, drawings of animals but uh, that's not really what I want to do here. I want to capture uh, the look of the animal and the overall shape of the animal uh, with uh, a little less work. Um, but uh, as I was saying, I'm still trying to define the realistic look of the fur, sticking to the usual things that I that I do, and uh, laying down that texture carefully and slowly, paying attention to the length of my strokes. And like I said, you can't draw every single hair, but when you blend it, it gets that um, softer look with more density and volume, and it looks more like actual fur coat, uh, fur on the animal. So, as you can see, as I'm blending, it's getting a lot softer. It's also getting a lot darker, but that's okay. Uh, I want it to be that way, because that gives me something to work with, because on top of those uh, darker values, I will have to pull some highlights uh, with a pencil eraser. So, uh, in order for those uh, lighter marks to stand out, obviously, I need uh, a layer of darker value to work with. Um, so, I think I might do a series of these how to draw videos on animals. So this is probably going to be the first one for now. We'll see. Because I'm kind of missing charcoal a little bit because uh, I've done a lot of uh, colored pencil work and I do love working colored, colored pencil, especially on sanded papers, but uh, charcoal has its appeal, it has some of its advantages, it's very, it's very simple and quick to work with. It's also a little bit messy, but uh, for someone who's been working with it for years, I've kind of gotten used to it and uh, found ways to control it. 
and use it to my advantage also because uh, a lot of these tools um, when they pick up a little bit of material you can do stuff with them that you can't do when they're clean for example tutilians uh, normally we think of them as blending tools but uh, yeah, I can also use them as drying tools when they pick up a bit of charcoal I already talked about that it's the same thing with the brushes I don't have to load them with charcoal I don't have to cover an area with charcoal we'll go over it with a piece of iron charcoal or charcoal pencil I just use a dirty brush that's already been used for blending and I just go over the background and I already uh, create I'm already able to create a little bit of value in that background it's the same thing when you're shading your main subject you just use a brush that has already picked up a little bit of material and you, just, you push it around and you establish some sort of a base value so uh, there are many advantages to working with charcoal because um, when you have so much of the residue so much of the material flying around <laughs> uh, you're bound to do something useful with it sooner or later so there's that um, here on the head on this forehead area the uh, the hair is very short so I need to make tiny marks to try to imitate that texture I'm gonna have to do a little bit of blending but the problem is that uh, the hair because it's so short here kinda looks a, a little bit more coarse and uh, it's gonna be a little bit uh, more difficult to define that texture so you always have to uh, try to experiment uh, with the way that your pencil works and to, to try to find ways to imitate um, the appearance of what you're drawing not not just in terms of the overall shape and the amount of values and the relationships between lighter and darker values but also between uh, the, uh, the textures uh, because uh, I always like to say in addition to the range of value you also want to have a range of textures but here it's mostly just um, fur so it's not really that complicated in that respect I'm just uh, sort of repeating the same process over and over again it's just that the uh, length of the fur varies in different parts of the animal's body and I have to vary my approach to uh, drawing that fur in different parts of the body so sometimes I will draw longer marks sometimes I will draw very short marks and sometimes I will even drag my pencil a little bit to produce some random texture that kind of looks like really really short fur uh, which is what I'll have to do eventually on the snout area uh, here I just uh, finished the one of the front legs or rather both of the front legs and I'm working around the ears here because I want to create enough contrast around the ears so that those lighter hairs on the edge of the ear would stand out and I'm also going to want the other ear to, ear to stand out against the background which is why I made the background a little bit darker on the right so here on this snout area and around the nose I just dragged my pencil and allowed it to produce a little bit of texture and that kind of looks like short hair I can add a few dots and a few short marks here and there but it, looks, it, it mostly looks the way I want it to look so I think I'm just going to leave it like that for the most part and just maybe make a few adjustments on the shape of the nose area and, and the eyes and things like that but just some minor adjustments and finally I'm doing a little bit more work with a pencil eraser I'm pulling some highlights on the top of the ears here because I want the lighter hair to stand out and also to have its proper shape and texture and I'm pretty happy uh, with the, the, the shape and, and of the ears and also with, the, uh, with uh, the contrast in value I was able to achieve between the head and the neck area because this transition between the neck and the head is a little bit darker and the ears are also casting a little bit of shadow onto the neck behind them so um, that allows the ears to stand out and that also allows uh, the view to understand the shape of the head uh, and the body a little bit better um, at one point for some of these finer hairs I also had to resort to using a graphite pencil for a few strokes uh, around the ear on the right but um, then I kinda decided that charcoal was doing a good enough job so I switched back to a charcoal pencil 
and uh, I'm just uh, wrapping things up on this uh, nose and mouth area just pulling some of these fine uh, highlights and th there's also some uh, nice shadows and contrasts here on the chest area because this part of the chest uh, just uh, behind the, the front leg the one that is bending is a little bit lighter because it's catching some light from from above so I like that contrast uh, because it allows me to define uh, the shape of that part of the body a little bit better. Right now I'm focusing on the rest of the background, just uh, pulling some lighter marks um, in the foreground to <clears throat> to um, draw that grass in front of the bear and also some marks uh, in behind the bear as well. So I, I wanted to make that grass, which is further away, a little bit less defined, and the one that is in the foreground in front of the legs a bit more defined and a bit uh, with a bit more contrast. These are just some of the finishing touches. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to uh, refine the the appearance of the fur at the top of the body here because I felt that some of the marks were a little bit. Uh, too well defined. I wanted to soften them a little bit with the tutelion so that it looks more like actual fur. And I'm almost done. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a like, comment, and of course, subscribe. And don't forget to check out my other videos because I have lots of drawings of animals as well as other stuff. Here I decided to pull a few more lighter marks because I didn't really like. Uh, this transition between this uh, shoulder area and the, one of the front legs. Uh, but the drawing is now done and I'm just going to put my signature in the lower right corner here. So that's, the, that's that. Also if you want to see longer videos and more content you should check out my Patreon. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. And bye for now.